Buongiorno a tutti, oggi abbiamo la fortuna, personalmente ho la fortuna, di poter scambiare quattro chiacchiere con una vera leggenda della musica rock, Mr. Ian Anderson, leader di Jetro Tal. So, hello Mr. Anderson, how are you? I am the same as I was yesterday and hopefully the same as I will be tomorrow because at my age continuity is everything. Siete ancora in tour con la band, con i Jetro Tal, e la vostra è davvero una vita trascorsa sui palchi del mondo. Ma, Mr. Anderson, qual è il segreto della vostra longevità artistica? Well, primarily I would um, say it's due to the, the support of our audiences and our fans for 53 years. Some of them have been following Jethro Tal for that long, so it's, it's because of them. And, you know, I am lucky age 75 to still have my job. Uh, if I was a British Airways um, uh, airline pilot, I would have had to have retired 10 years ago. And that would be it, over, career, gone, everything finished. I'd have to fly a Cessna. And I don't think I would find that that much fun. So, um, you know, in most areas of life, you have to accept that you quit. You know, you're forced to retire. Uh, and if you're a football player or a tennis player, you know, you're probably by the age of 35, your, your professional career is more or less over. And um, luckily in my game, in the world of arts and entertainment, you die with your boots on. You know, you get to go on until either nobody wants to come to your, see your movie or come to your theater play or buy your record or whatever, uh, that's their choice. But um, otherwise, you, you can go on as long as you feel okay and as long as you're capable of doing your, your work in a way that will be appealing to other people. So there are lots of actors and singers older than I am who still, still are working. And, you know, I remember when I, when I grew up as a teenager, most of the people I listened to, it wasn't uh, who was ever in the pop charts, it was people who were older than my father. You know, I, I grew up listening to music by people who were either already dead or they were pretty seriously old. And um, in the world of jazz and blues or in classical music, you know, it, I got used to the, the idea that what I liked the best was coming from old people. So I, I hope that maybe that works out for me too. Gli anni scorrono, le ere cambiano, i gusti, le mode, musicali e non. Non è che state sfidando qualche legge della fisica? Um, well, so far, but then I'm, I'm one of those people who takes care of myself. <coughs> you know, every year I go for, a, you know, check, medical checks and um, every uh, two or three years I have a colonoscopy, every year I have a prostate check, every uh, year I do heart and... Uh, basic blood test functions and um, you know I always I always think it's better to go looking for trouble if you go looking for it usually you don't find it but if you don't go looking for it it can sneak up behind you and then uh, catch you perhaps when it's big trouble as opposed to manageable trouble so uh, I'm I'm uh, I, I prefer to know what's going on and um, I try to Try to, especially in the in in the last in the last uh, two and a half years of COVID, I've been um, been very very careful, but I've also been very very lucky. But you know, right now, for example, I, I had to go take my cat into the vet. I have to go for a, a booster vaccination dose this afternoon, and um, I will be amongst people. I get on airplanes, I go in buses and trains, and I'm you know surrounded by people, many of whom probably have COVID, whether they know it or not. So far, I'm, I am careful, always wearing my mask, and, uh, and, um, and I'm also very lucky, because if I get COVID, I can't, I can't call in sick or work from home. You know, thousands of people will be very angry with me if I get COVID today or tomorrow or next week. They won't be sympathetic. 
my band and crew will be angry because they'll be out of a job and um, and the audience will be very upset because many of them bought their tickets back in 2019. So being careful and lucky is the way I have to be. La tua fusione, la tua personale fusione artistica della fine degli anni 60 è ancora molto apprezzata. Oserei dire che è qualcosa di classico, come si suol dire. Come te lo spieghi? Well, you could explain it by saying if something lasts for 50 years or longer, then it becomes either it's forgotten or it becomes classic. So with those two options in mind, if, if, if people still remember the music or they still buy the records, then I guess it's considered classic. Um, generally speaking, the term classic rock applies and has done for many years. Um, particularly in the USA, I think it first began because of what was just loosely referred to as FM radio, then became um, classic rock. And so these days there are the classic rock stations in every city in America. At least one, maybe two, maybe three classic rock stations. So it's a term that I think is just basically there to talk about um, the music that has established itself and it's not going away anytime soon. So it may not be as important as the music of Beethoven or Bach or Brahms or or Handel, but it's important enough in people's lives to have crossed two or three generations so far. And uh, I, I think that probably a lot of the best of pop and rock music will be remembered in a hundred years or two hundred years from now. It, it would be hard to imagine that in 200 years time, if there is still life on planet Earth, people will be listening to the Beatles. I'm pretty sure of that. Ricordi come avvenne quella fusione tra rock, jazz, blues, folk alla fine degli anni 60 e soprattutto che atmosfera si respirava allora? Well, back then the only way to hear music was to go looking for it because um, it wasn't played on the radio. I mean, some pop music was played on the radio, but you know, top 10 chart music. Um, but if you wanted to listen to other kinds of music, you had to go looking for it. And the only source was to go to record stores and to go through the racks of records and ask the man in the record store to be kind enough to let you listen to some of the music. Uh, and of course, we couldn't really afford to buy it. So it was, uh, we depended on, on the goodwill of the owner of the record store to actually let us hear some of these great records. And, um, we would save up our money and maybe every month we might be able to club together and buy an album. So I got to hear you know, a lot of music from mainly blues and jazz artists when I was a teenager. Uh, but you really had to work hard to find it. These days, of course, you just have to tune into Spotify or Apple Music and search and you can hear almost everything that has ever been recorded since the, since the beginning of recorded music. It's all so easy to find. Un nuovo album dopo tanti anni. A cosa è dovuto questo tempo? Uh, well, a new album, we had a, you know, we recorded an album in 2012, but I released it as a solo album uh, because it was a project I wanted to do for personal reasons without, you know, without the 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 uh, couple of the band members who had other other um, other things going on in our lives and so I decided I should make it a solo album so that was thick as a brick 2 in 2012 and in 2014 I released an album called Homo Eraticus which was very much a band album but I again put it out under my own name in 2017 we had an album the Jethro Tull string quartets album and um, and then that year I started work on a new project but COVID came along and meant that I didn't get it finished until um, the middle of last year. And uh, that was, um, you know, a long time to have to wait for me as well as for people who were aware that I was working on a new record. But since then, I have recorded yet another album, which I am um, just finishing off the artwork this week and then just going to deliver to the record company and they will then be um, they will then be uh, getting that into the into the works you have to wait these days 
up to a year to get vinyl press because of the huge queues of people wanting to release in vinyl format again. And uh, we've, we've been in the queue now for six months, so it'll be April before the new record is released. But, you know, that's two records in two years, so the um, we've picked up the pace again. <laughs> Perché prendere spunto dalla comunità ebraica del primo secolo, gli zelotti, per raccontarci il mondo di oggi, la società contemporanea? Well, I think it's always interesting to, to write music and songs and lyrics, you know, where you can look at the big picture, perhaps a historical picture, perhaps a more analytical picture, but you can also relate that to, to the world today. And, um, I mean, it's the same thing with the new record, the record I've just just finished recording which uh, again is um, is relating in all in each song it takes part of the song and relates it to the world we live in today and i think that's you know as a songwriter it's an interesting process to have one foot in the past and one foot in the in the immediate future that's the way i like to write but most people don't. Most people write love songs or songs about being out of love. Their vocabulary is fairly limited to the usual vocabulary of pop music lyrics. And um, I like to be a little more adventurous, but it's not everybody's taste. I mean, a lot of people will think what I write is, is uh, pompous, arrogant, uh, self-serving. You know, it could be seen to be um, Definitely not music or lyrics for everybody, but there are plenty of people out there writing the usual pop and rock lyrics, so I feel there's always room for someone like me to come along who writes something that doesn't necessarily fit into the usual pattern. E ascoltando il nuovo disco in questi giorni, ho apprezzato anche molto la tua capacità di scavare nell'animo umano, anzi, forse per meglio dire, di scavare nelle rovine dell'animo umano. Well, sometimes it's not a pretty sight to look into the, the psyche of ourselves or indeed other people perhaps that we know and to be disappointed by their attitudes, their views, their behavior. But it's the world we live in. It's not a pretty place. And um, I, I uh, feel that by looking at some of the, the bad stuff, alongside the good stuff. It makes you more appreciative of the good stuff. So it doesn't make me depressed or feel negative. I, I think that by looking at, looking at history, looking at the present day, all the bad things have something to teach us, you know, in the hope that we can enjoy the good things about today's world and that we can look forward or our children, our grandchildren can look forward to better things sometime in the future. So if Mr. Putin manages to keep his hands off the nuclear button, then um, there is a chance that uh, mankind might survive for another, another few years until um, the lunatic in North Korea um, gets missiles that can travel a little further than Japan. But, you know, the world is a scary place and people are very fond of using media, in the case of Putin, state media and um, fake internet news to try and manipulate not only his own people, but peoples of the rest of the world. It's the, you know, it's an unfortunate thing about using media to control people and to preserve your own position of power. And that, that is, you know, lies behind some of the songs on the Zealot Gene album, for example. E come hai trascorso il tempo durante il lockdown? Passeggiando nella natura, cucinando, componendo? Molti dei tuoi colleghi hanno vissuto queste esperienze. Yeah, all of those things. It's, um, it was a period of 18 months when my band and crew had no work and um, I tried to use it in a positive way. So I was working on two or three projects and um, kept me busy all the, all the way through lockdown. But I also had a little more time to spend with my family. 
and my cats and my dogs and enjoy being at home. So I, you know, I tried to use it in a positive way, and it was um, it was um, also an opportunity to read and even to watch some movies. You know, I don't really watch movies very much or television, but it was, you know, I got to see some great great things that um, that I didn't usually have time to do. Ian Anderson, sei cosciente di essere considerato oggi una sorta di leggenda vivente? Well, I'm a, if I'm a legend, I'm a very small legend. I'm a pretty insignificant legend by the standards of, of uh, Elvis Presley or the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the third division. Um, you know, there are big legends, there are medium-sized legends, and then there are little legends. And, you know, I think, you know, I'm definitely in that last category, but, you know, I'm probably in the same category alongside Frank Zappa. So I'm perfectly happy with that. Ian Anderson, per congedarci e salutarci, giusto una questione. In novembre sarete in concerto in Svizzera, anche a Lugano, e il programma si intitola The Prog Years. Ma cosa significa? <laughs> It means it's a marketing description. Um, basically, the set list is, you know, a mixture of classic Jethro Tull songs that people know, as well as some songs that are maybe they're less familiar with but they they all fit into the general term of progressive rock because i actually began that in um in uh, november of 1968 i wrote a song um which i think that was probably the second song that i would describe in my musical career as fitting into a category that a year or so later became known as progressive rock the first one was a, a track on the very first jethro Jethro Tell album, a song called Dharma for One, which did not obey the rules of the blues or or folk music or other things. It was a it was a step into something different. And and um the song Love Story from from uh, the latter part of 68, again, you know, it, it wasn't the blues, it was something different. And I went on to to then probably on every album, there would be one or two or three songs that I would describe as being progressive rock. I mean, there are other songs that you might call progressive folk or, you know, they, they fit a different genre because Jethro Tull, because of my songwriting, I suppose, always been very eclectic as a, as a band. You know, we, we draw from a lot of different influences and always the members of the band have had different musical backgrounds. You know, we're not, we're not to, we didn't all learn about music in the same way or from the same people. So we all have um, different different musical backgrounds and that is, you know, I think a good thing. But the songs that we'll be playing uh, for the rest of this year are songs that I would describe as being examples of Jethro Tull, the progressive rock band. So it's it's the first 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 concert tour I can remember doing since 1970 when I did not carry an acoustic guitar with me on tour because this is all rock music. It's this not a, there are no acoustic performances in the song, in the, in the set. Mr. Anderson, thank you very much. See you in Switzerland in November. Yeah, yeah, we'll be, we will be there. And um, I hope that, uh, I hope that, uh, well, actually, you know, come to think of it, I was in Switzerland, I was in Switzerland last year. Um, we did, uh, did a couple of shows in Switzerland last year, so, Um, it's, um, we've been back on the road now for uh, more than a year and it's been, uh, it's been a chance to go and revisit a lot, of, a lot of places, a lot of fans in different countries that uh, after two years of not seeing anybody, it was, um, it was good to be back. So yeah, we're looking forward to coming uh, to, um, to, where are we playing? In, uh, in Zurich, um, Lausanne, is it? I can't remember where we are. And um, in this year, I'm still looking, yes, in oh, Lugano and Zurich. And uh, maybe it's next year we're playing in a couple more Swiss concerts that were rescheduled into early next year. So people have the chance to see us um, in different parts of Switzerland during the next few months. Anyway, great to talk to you and uh, I shall uh, move on to the next unhappy journalist. <laughs> Good to talk to you. Take care. Bye-bye now.